David asked me did I think it would to, to have a look and, and see if I thought myself if I could um, create a thread mm -hmm. and uh, so I went away over the weekend had a look at some stuff on YouTube I mean I was aware of who he was mm -hmm. I remember as a, as a kid watching documentaries with that um, and I kind of decided yeah I could give it a stab uh, so I asked him if I could I bought him a read for it and the rest is history <laughs> well I mean the man was a, a legend really um, throughout the UK and I'm sure throughout the world um, I mean thanks to his, his TV stuff but my, my father was a builder and a man of a certain generation um, and so I think to, to, to him, to people like him, he, he was a fascinating character, you know, and he was a great talker, he was such a personality. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, the thing is that I'm playing him when he was in the latter years of his life, which is, oh, I'm, I'm having to age 20 years, at least. Um, really, you start from, from the, the, the basis of any, any performance comes from the text. So no matter what research you do, no matter how you, you, you look at the man, you can only play what's written. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and and it's, it's, it's a very interesting piece, it's, it's a challenging piece. It's about a man <clears throat> struggling to come to terms with the breakdown of his second marriage, mm -hmm. falling in love with a, a younger woman, um, and then coming to terms with his illness. and. and uh, the drying up of his television work and stuff. So it's a lot of different things going on at this, uh, at this time. We, 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 we only know the Fred that we've seen on TV, really, although everybody in Bolton has a story about Fred, everybody in meet knows Fred, or even yesterday we were walking past, that was in a, I think it was a, a woman, I think she was just like a little bit of Alzheimer's, but she looked like she had a car with her, like she was coming from, a, just having a little walk, because it was a pleasant morning. And she was like, oh yeah, I remember Fred, I remember Fred, you know, so everybody you talk to has a story about Fred. Is that, he's, 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 you know, he was a real life person, but he was, I think there's a lot of myth surrounding him, you know. So, but like I say, we're dealing with uh, personal aspects of his life, which, which other people wouldn't see, which is, um, so I mean, there's a certain amount of dramatic license there, obviously, but you've got to look into, uh, why his marriage is split up? Mm -hmm. Why? My own personal belief is that he was a man completely born out of his time, yeah. you know, stuck in, in Victorian times. Of it, you know, and, and women, I think, to Fred were, were, you know, they, they were there to look after him. Mm -hmm. He did his work in the garden and his chimneys and all the rest of his TV work, and expected then mm -hmm. his his wives or partners to to be at home cooking and cleaning for him. Yeah. Which, you know, there's a lot of men who expect that, you know, or, or of a certain generation. And, and it's difficult for me, it's challenging for me as someone who, who you know, believes in, in, in equality, in sexual equality, and who, you know, revered my own mother, you know, I've I seen her as, you know, people think we, we come from patriarchal societies, but I believe that, that you know, um, I believe in the matriarch, you know. So it's, it's, it may well upset a few people um, as to how they you know, think about Fred, yeah. but that's what drama's about. Yeah. You know, we're not here to um, glorify or anything, yeah. you know, it's to, to try and explain a, a difficult time in, in his life and other people's lives around him. Nice to know that can kind of explore. Well, there'd be no, there'd be no conflict in that. Would there'd yeah. be no drama? There'd be no, you know, just be. Oh, yeah, wasn't he wonderful? Yeah. But there's so much TV footage and documentary footage showing that side of Fred. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to show the struggles that he was going through and and uh, you know why did he have two failed marriages? Mm -hmm. Why you know? And, and I think this production will give us an insight into. To the uh, a different side of the man, you know. Yeah. What what a fantastic woman, an incredibly brave woman. Yeah. Um, I mean, just I've, I've become a, quite close to her and quite um, become quite good friends actually through Romeo and Juliet, due to the fact she's staying in Manchester and gives me a lift. <laughs> you know, I always latch on to somebody who's staying in Manchester <laughs> and drives, which is nice. Yeah. But um, I, I think Michelle's incredibly brave, having such a high 
profile, mm -hmm. TV profile, to come to a regional theatre, uh, one, to do her first Shakespeare production, which I thought she was magnificent and I thought she really, really shone. Mm -hmm. And I think then to take on a role like Sheila Didna, um, I think she's incredibly brave. And from what she's been doing in rehearsals, I think <coughs> she'll be fantastic again. I mean, she's, she's uh, I realised, you know, she was the one who was looking after Fred when he was yeah. dying. And who, uh, for that short period of time they were together, you know, uh, sorted his, his life out, you know, got him, got him organised his, his, his talks and his mm -hmm. chimney drops and, mm -hmm. and sorted out his finances. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's two sides to every story and, and you know, and, and I hope people will realise that, you know, Fred loved her, yeah. he married her, and they had a, a, a period of time where they were very happy. Yeah. So I, I hope people will, will be a bit, sort of, have a bit more empathy, yeah. at least, towards, towards Sheila. And I think, I think Michelle will do that, you know, and what a fantastic actress as well. And a, and a beautiful person, a lovely person. It's a so when did you first start acting? When did you first think that's what I did? <coughs> when I was 11. Really? Yeah. The BBC came to school, uh, primary school, and, uh, and they sent a few of us who were in the plays down to see them. Um, I'd, I'd been Mr Bumble in, in Oliver Twist because my voice had broken, so I was the only person who <laughs> could play that. And, and, and <coughs> I got cast in a... In a a play for today, BBC Northern Ireland, called Cowboys. I also worked as a stand-up comic mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland from no I was 15, okay. around the working men's clubs. Sure. Yeah. And I continued to work up until I was 20 and my family decided to move to England and then I came here and discovered girls <laughs> and, and drink mm -hmm. and I fell in love with a, a beautiful woman, had a child and uh, stopped for about 15 years, 13, 14 years. So I had to go back to drama school, okay. which was an experience at 33 years of age. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know what I'm doing. It. Uh, each night before I go out, I pick a, a seat in the auditorium where my mum would be sitting. Yeah. And I, I, I performed to her because I know that, you know, she'd be there. And yeah. It should be, like if she was still alive, she'd be, Going, oh, it's Ben Fred Dibbon and I. Yes, <laughs> everybody would know what I'd be doing. You know, and then, Have a look on the website. Have you seen the photographs? Oh, yes, and he's working with Michelle Collins mm -hmm. and Billy Corkill. Mm -hmm. You know, she she would be delighted, absolutely delighted. So that's that's what keeps me going. That's why I do it.